Hello and welcome to Church at Home with Rachel for Wednesday, the 25th of January. Um, Dude is here. He's joining me today, so he may pop up and make an appearance. He may not. We'll see. He's not feeling very well. He's got a bad leg and his drugs make him kind of drowsy. <laughs> but um, So Church at Home, oh yeah, Rachel Parker, that's me, she and her, Anglican priest, Day Spring Ministries, churches from St. Mary's Edgerton, St. Saviour's in Vermilion, and St. Thomas and Wainwright, the Anglican Church of Canada, the Diocese of Edmonton in beautiful Alberta. That's me. Glad you're here with me today. Today, I'm not going to talk about church stuff. Today, I want I just have a little rant. Of course, we are in the middle of football season. Well, we're toward the end of football season, heading toward that great American um, version of the world domination. Um, I really do struggle with the whole... Um, Super Bowl being the champions of the world when the only teams that compete are American. Canada has the CFL, and it's pretty damn fine football with some tougher rules. So maybe there should be a championship between the CFL and the NFL and call that the world championship or bring in some rugby teams from Australia or something. Anyway, that's not my rant. My rant is about what's happening with sports on television. Uh, Some of you may know I'm a big hockey fan. I'm not a big football fan, but I'm, you know, my husband is, so I'm absorbing it as the time goes by. Sunday afternoon um, after church and after I do some church work is generally ends up being football. I I listen (laughs) while I do play on my iPad or read a book. Um, Saturday nights are hockey night in Canada, as are many nights of the week when when teams are playing. Um, But I am I am really disturbed this this year. Um, over the past couple of years, but in particular this year, uh, but what is happening with our with our um, professional sports on on the media on television? I am a big fan that we no longer advertise cigarettes. They are addictive. They are hard. They're they can be they can be killers for your health. We all know that you know. I'm not judging anyone who smokes, um, but we all know how difficult it can be to quit once you've started. And many, many people have lost their lives to cigarettes. They just have. And you know what? We have rules about how we advertise these things. We don't advertise cigarettes on television anymore. I haven't even seen any on the internet either. Um, We don't make, you know, we don't turn them into our heroes like the old cowboy that was on the cigarettes that was once upon a time we put them more at least in canada there are warning really gross looking warning labels on actual cigarette packages to remind people that these are not good for your health unfortunately we still advertise alcohol we put the whole drink responsibly thing at the bottom we also have at least in canada mad um, mothers against drunk driving i think that actually that title has changed um, but reminders, especially around times like Christmas and New Year's, it'll show up for Super Bowl. Um, anytime we have um, times when people are encouraged to get together and drink, um, people will be reminded of those commercials. Those will, those will pop up on TV to remind people that you really need to not drink and drive. But lately, the NHL, the National Hockey League, and the NFL, the National Football League, Um, productions on all the different channels seem to have really embraced the idea that that sports betting is the way to go. Um, No, it is not. For the person who has the ability to lay a small wager like five bucks says whatever and then that's it. They maybe even forget to pay out or to receive. That's one thing. But betting, sports betting, financial betting can be just as addictive, is just as addictive as smoking or alcohol. And I am appalled by what I am seeing. I was watching a hockey game the other night. In the middle of the game, they threw, it was the Ottawa Senators, and they threw up FanDuel or whatever bloody ridiculous betting company was, was sponsoring it, threw up the odds of the Ottawa Senators winning in the middle of the game. Like, wasn't even a commercial. It came up as a banner underneath the players playing hockey. The odds for Ottawa to win. I remember the days when we had Coach's Corner for Hockey Night in Canada on CBC. And a lot of people didn't like Don Cherry. Called it like he saw it. He could be crass. He could be, he was loud. Um, There were a lot of things that Don said that were really controversial. But they made people think. 
They made people think, they questioned, they argued. And they got rid of Don Cherry because he made people think too much. People, he offended people's sensibilities. Maybe they were right. I'm not arguing whether or not I agree that Don Cherry should be kicked off the air. But he and Ron McLean would talk about big topics. They would argue. They didn't always agree. They would, they would buck the system from time to time. They also took time to remember our first responders and our Canadian Armed Forces. They were a moment between the first and second period of hockey when we talked about hockey and we listened to somebody else's perspective, perspectives of people who actually were involved with the sport, people who, who brought to us opinions that we didn't have to agree with, but that allowed us to at least have a different idea of what we could think about or what was going on. That was taken off the air because it was too offensive to people. And yet now, even Ron McLean is advertising for sports betting. We have people that I used to like watching and hearing their perspective about what was happening in the game actually doing segments that are meant to talk about the over and under odds. Who's like what? Who needs to watch out for this and how you might bet? Every commercial, it seems, is about how do you bet and, and companies that are allowing you to make you know, a $20 bid, get bet, bet gets you a $150 um, credit to bet with. And, and then always, you know, that whole bet responsibly and the little codicil about, you know, if you need help, you can call this number or go to this website. It seems to me that if we have to tell people, if you need help with this particular thing that we're pushing on you, maybe we shouldn't, and we have to advertise that part of it too, maybe we shouldn't be pushing it on you in the first place. There is, I don't find anything wrong with a small wager or a couple of people getting together and, you know, saying, here's our little football pool or our, our, our fantasy hockey pool. That's one thing. But when you are encouraging people to sit in their living rooms with their phones or their computers to give their credit card numbers to people who can easily get sucked into giving so much up that they lose everything else that they have, there is a problem. The NFL and the NHL make so much money. Now, granted, the NFL does a lot of good work around ensuring that there's work done around children's sports, encouraging the, the athletes to get involved with their own charities and things like that. The NHL may quietly do it, but it is not nearly as obvious um, as the work done by the NFL. But in either case, whether it's Goodall with the NFL or Gary Bettman with the NHL, the bottom line, that dollar sign, has become more important than any of the people who play to make the money for you or any of the people who watch, who give you the money. It is enough that we have to face the difficulties of people of the inflation and a possible recession and people who are searching after COVID for something that makes them feel whole. We know that addictions are not good for people. And yet, two of our biggest sports that are on TV all the time, and definitely on during prime time, are pushing and encouraging people to get addicted. Now, I know they're going to say that's not what they're doing. They're simply offering a service that other people are wanting. But the fact is, if you didn't offer the service in the first place, many, many people wouldn't end up in predicaments that they're in. There is no good that can come from sports betting like this. And there is no reason why a 10-year-old watching his favorite hockey, game, hockey team on a Saturday night should be bombarded with images and ideas that it's okay for him or his dad or her dad to go out and, and, and bet on sports. We would die if our kids were betting on their own teams. Why do we encourage people or their parents to do the same? This needs to end. I don't know how to do that. I'm going to start writing letters, I think, to broadcasters, but I don't know what to do about it, but I know it's wrong. We as a society need to stop this from happening. Here endeth the rant. Have a good day. I'll come back tomorrow and talk about something nice, <laughs> something, you know, godlike or, uh, you know, encouraging. But right now, I think we all need to get together and recognize and voice our, and make our voices heard that this is wrong. We need to end the public pushing of sports betting. It needs to end. Have a great day. God bless. And I'll see you again tomorrow for Church at Home with Rachel. <laughs>